Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new video. Today we're going to have a look at Cute Fish OS, which is a Debian 11 based distribution with a desktop environment, which is the Cute Fish desktop environment, very similar to macOS visually. So if you like macOS, you're coming from macOS and you want to try something on Linux with the same visual appearance, Cute Fish OS is definitely what you try. Now, word of caution, this is still beta software. So just be aware that it's still not a stable version. But without further talking, let's jump into the video. So here we go, guys. This is the website for Cutefish OS. So in today's video, we are just going to give it a quick look. We are going to install it, in this case, on a virtual machine. And we're going to look around the desktop and see what is in this OS. Now, Cutefish is based on Debian 11 and it uses the cute fish uh, de or the desktop environment which looks very similar to mac os now this is going to be really good for people who like the mac os ui but want to have a linux operating system so this is the website for cute fish os i'm gonna leave a link to it in the video description below you can see they have now the possibility to download the beta which is a 0.8 version so keep in mind this is beta software it's not yet stable so you can test it out if you want on your machine, but it's your own risk here. I recommend you to try this out first on a virtual machine. Now you can download it directly from here and we have here on the homepage a few things about the OS. Now Qtfish OS, as you can see here, uses the Qtfish desktop environment, which as it says here, it's built using Qt Quick and some KDE basic frameworks. And they created also here some unique apps for Qtfish OS. So the website here just is going to tell you about the project. Not many informations here, but this is also, I think, the philosophy behind Qtfish OS, just to keep it simple and elegant. And we have some other sections up here to download the ISO, which you can do right now from Google Drive or Mega. We have also an about page, which provides just a few informations and how you can contact the Cute Fish OS team. We have a forum and we can switch also language to the Chinese language here. Now, Cute Fish OS is developed in China and it's based, as I said before, on Debian 11. So once you download your ISO, if you want to try this out, you can connect your ISO on a virtual machine or if you want to try it out on Metal, you can burn the ISO to a USB stick and boot your USB stick from there. Now, once you boot the machine, whether it's a VM or on metal you will see this window so cute fish os is using the calamares installer to install the system and we're going to look at the desktop in a second but first let's install it now the installation process it's very familiar because it's using the calamares installer but nevertheless let's go through it so i'm going to choose first the language which is going to be english in my case and then click next now because i have already an internet connection it's already detecting my time zone here if you don't you should be able to configure wi-fi right up here now i don't have wi-fi in this machine that's why it's not appearing up here so i'm going to click next now i'm going to select my keyboard so you just select the model you have and click next and here we can select what you want to do with your disk so in my case i want to erase the disk and i'm not given any choice here to install with a particular file system or to install with swap file. It's just gonna do a typical install here. You can see at the bottom with ext4 and an eight gigabyte swap partition. Now, maybe in the future, we're gonna see an update here having swap files or creating our system with other file systems. But right now we have ext4 and a swap partition here with 8.8 KB bytes. So if you wanna encrypt the partition, of course you can do it from here and then we can click next. We're gonna create an account for the system. So I'm just gonna put in my name here. The username is fine. And the name of the computer is Cute Fish OS. In my case, you can rename it as you wish and a password for your user and retype it and then click next. We have a summary here of what is going to be created. So that's fine for me. I'm gonna click install and install now. So as is typical with Calamares, it's going to take a couple of minutes here to install the system. So I'll pause the video here, guys, and I'll be back with you once it's done. So the basic installation is finished and we can now restart our machine. So let's click on done here and it's going to take a moment to reboot. You can see there, please remove the live medium. So this is going to be automatically done for me. So I'm just going to hit enter and we should be rebooting into the grab menu. So this is a grab menu for uh, Qt Fish OS. You can see we have three options here. We can boot in the system. We have advanced options and system setup. I'm gonna boot just the system 
and it's going to take a moment to do this we should see also the splash screen very soon there you go and we should now be greeted by the display manager so here we are now we can enter the passwords now we have here a small setup or a small presentation let's say we can click next here to continue and we can choose between light style and dark style. I'm going to go with dark and then click next. And it's going to load the last things here. And we can now start Cutefish OS. And this is now on the desktop. So you can see here the familiarity. It's very similar to Mac OS. And so let's explore here a little bit. We have a dock here with some applications already docked in. We have here the launcher, which if we click on it, will launch basically the applications installed in the system. You can see the system is fairly light. It doesn't have that many applications installed. We have an archive manager, a calculator, a browser, some apps here for document viewing, a file manager, Gparted, image viewer, and some other apps. We have also a package installer. When we have also here the store, which is the Cutefish OS store here, you can install some apps from here. We have the settings, we have screenshot program, we have a system update to update the system directly from here. And we have, of course, our terminal. And as I said, Cutefish OS is based on Debian 11. I'm going to show you this in a second. We have a text editor and a video player. And that's all there is to it. Now we can search applications from the top here, from the top bar. And here we have the status bar on the top here, which is basically going to show us also menus for programs. So for example, if we open up here the browser, you will see on the top here, it's having the browser menu is here on the top. So it's basically the same setting we have in Mac OS, as I said before. Now we have here the file browser, which is already pinned. You can see the file browser resemblance is also similar to Mac OS. Also the styles, the icons are fairly similar. But again, if you're coming from Mac OS and you want to use a system which is going to last for you years on your machine, even on other machine, this is definitely worth a try. Although, as I said before, this is still beta software, so you might want to wait until it reaches version one. Now here we can change also how the icons appears. For example, if you want to go on the list menu, you can do it from up here. Now we have the terminal here as well. So let's open this up and you can see here we have Cutefish OS. This is the host name I chose before. If I type in uname dash R, you can see we are using the kernel 5.10.10. So this is the same kernel of Debian 11. And of course, we can also update our system with sudo app update if you want to do it on a terminal or if you prefer to do it on a GUI, you can pull up here the system update and you're going to be able to do it the same way here as well. And I think there are already some updates for the system. You can see we have some updates. There are not that many. So we can just click update now here. It's going to take a moment. We need to, of course, authenticate. And it's going to take a moment here to install the updates. Now let's go back to the terminal here. If we right click on the terminal and we go to settings, we have some settings to control our terminal here. We can change the font and the font size. For example, we can make it bigger. We can also change the transparency of the terminal and the window blur. Now there is no really other possibilities here to change other parameters, at least for now. For example, scroll bar or anything else. Maybe it comes in the future. I'm not sure, but right now this is all we have. So let's close the window here shortly. You can see it's updated in the system. It's actually almost done because there are not that many updates. But in the meantime, let's have a look here at the system settings. And so we have here a Wi-Fi. Right now, I don't have anything because I don't have a Wi-Fi adapter in this machine. So that's why it's not appearing here. We have an Ethernet connection, which is in my case already active. We have Bluetooth. Right now, I don't have any Bluetooth adapter here. But if you have one, you will see it here. Proxy, nothing for me here to use. Now we have the display settings. So right now you can choose the resolution, the refresh rate and the rotation of the display. You can also choose the scaling here, which is also showing you fractional scaling from 100 to 200 percent. We have appearance. This is basically going to give you the choice between light and dark theme. We can also dim the wallpaper in dark theme, but for me, that's fine. System effects, we can turn them off or on if you want. We can choose the minimizing action here and also the accent colors. For me, this is fine. I'm just going to accept the defaults here. Now for the fonts, we can of course choose the fonts for the system. We can change the background of our system as well. Right now we have already some installed. So I'm going to choose this fish here, which looks pretty neat. We have some options for the dock. We can center it or we can have it full screen. So it is really up to you. You can choose the one you prefer. In my case, I'm going to go with center. You can also choose the position if you want to have it on the left, on the bottom or on the right. I'm going to go with the bottom here and you can choose also the size. So small, medium, large and huge. I'm going to go with small here. 
and also the display mode so always show basically means if you open for example something like the browser full screen you will have the dock appearing all the time always hide means the dock is always hidden and smart hide is basically going to hide the dock when you open up a window in full screen and when you close it it's going to appear again now here we have some options for the user right now it's just telling me that it's my user with my name here and i am actually an administrator you can also turn on here automatic login or you can change also the password or add other users from here as well we have some settings here for notifications not much to see here just do not disturb maybe this is going to have more settings in the future we have also some settings for sounds here we have only the output and input devices right now not much to see here because on a virtual machine this is all i have we have also some options for the mouse right now we have here the option selected for advaita we can also go with a cute fish light or cute fish dark up to you pointer speed is here if you are a lefty you can select this option here left hand or natural scrolling if you prefer that you can select it from up here now date and time not much to see here you can choose automatic sync which is already on for me and 24 hour time if you prefer that in my case yes so i'm just going to turn this on and here you can choose also your time zone we have here default applications right now there are nothing set but just going to say for example for the web browser here choose chromium which is already pre-installed you can of course install other browser if you wish to do so the file manager that's the only one i have and the terminal here it's the terminal app which is still open right here now for the language here of course you can select your language and we have some options for the battery this is a laptop actually so i'm going to show also the percentage in the status bar which is going to appear up here and we have some options also for power right now it's on power safe but you can go to performance you can also choose here when to turn off the screen and hibernate after the screen is turned off or lock the screen after it turns off and the last option we have here is about Qtfish OS. You can see here the system is 0 0.8. So as I said before, this is still beta. The system architecture, the kernel version, the processor, how much RAM this machine has, and the internal storage. And you can, of course, also update your system from here, which is going to pull up the GUI we saw before. So this is all there is to it for the settings. And you can see the update is now complete and we should actually reboot the system for these updates to take effect but i'm gonna do this later so i'm just gonna click exit so we have also a calculator here pinned in the dock we have also the package installer this is basically going to tell you to drag a package file in here and it's going to install it in the system and then we have the screenshot tool here and also the video player now we have also the trash you can also open it from here directly if you wish to do so now here on top we have basically the desktop with nothing special here there is no menu right now we have on the side here the keyboard if you have multiple input methods you can select them from here we have here an applet for the wi-fi dark mode and also the volume we have also here the date and the battery of course we can also choose here and we're going to brought back here to the settings now here we have the boot menu we can shut down the machine reboot log out lock the screen and suspend now if you lock the screen it's just gonna show you again basically the uh, login screen we saw before so we can just enter the password here and we have also here the date which is going to show us also the notification center now if we open up the terminal and let's go full screen here just to see better and let's type in cat slash etsy slash fstab we can see basically the partitions we have in our system so we have an efi partition because this is a ufi machine we have the root partition here with ext4 file system type and the swap partition we saw before so if you want to have a home partition you will have to partition the disk manually during the calamares installation now if we type in free dash h you're gonna see how much memory this is using right now one gigabytes of ram so it's not really the lightest one but i had actually instances before where it was using less memory than this this is maybe because some other things are running in the background right now but you'll have to expect probably between 800 and 1 gigabyte of RAM. So it's definitely not the lightest desktop. But again, if you like macOS or you're coming from macOS and you want to try something similar to macOS in terms of visual appearance, Qtfish OS is definitely worth a try if you have a machine which can run it. Now, again, this is based on Debian, so we can, of course, use sudo apt update to check also for updates here. We need to authenticate. Of course, we just did that, so there are surely no updates to install right now we just need to reboot the machine as you can see 
And if we type in, in here cat slash etsy slash os release, you can see here it's based on Debian GNU Linux 11 Bullseye. So you can be sure here to have stable packages and an LTS kernel, which will last for some years. Now, this is a very quick overview of Cute Fish OS. Again, this is beta, so try out to your own risk. But if you like something which has the visual appearance of Mac OS and you want to have a Debian based distribution with an LTS kernel and Debian packages, give Cute Fish OS a try and check out again Cute Fish OS when it will be released with the one version, which is going to be probably the stable version, hopefully soon. But Cute Fish OS really looks like a nice distribution for people who are coming from Mac OS and want to come to Linux or people who want to have a distribution which is using a very elegant desktop environment. Now, of course, this is not the only distribution which is using this kind of visual desktop environment. You can actually make KDE looks like this, but this is coming out of the box and it's based on Debian and not on Ubuntu. So you really have very stable packages here because it's based on Debian Bullseye. Now, if you try this out, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. And if you have any question, let me also know in the comments below. I will try to answer you as soon as I can. So this was a very quick overview of Cute Fish OS. You can see it's visually very similar to Mac OS. So if you're coming from Mac OS, you want to try something on Linux looking very similar to it. This is definitely worth a try. And being based on Debian 11, you can be sure that you will have a stable system using the LTS kernel and Debian packages. Now, if you try this out, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. And if you have any question about this video, let me also know in the comments below. I will try to answer you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe if you haven't yet. This really helps me out and I'll see you very soon in the next video.